companies make money by shipping products to their users more users the more i would say the revenue will come up writing code in java can be sometime a bit more lengthy considering the fact that java is very verbose mature packages and mature libraries available that makes spring boot really really interesting java and kotlin are the primary languages in which you can write a spring boot code it makes the overall spring boot ecosystem very very powerful then spring boot has all the required tools and all the required i would say libraries that can help you to get started with it very very easily if you are stuck somewhere very easily you will be able to find some answers around your question on stack overflow there is such a good community that has been built they have to rely on open source solutions and they have to rely on these kind of developer communities and if you want to get started with spring boot it is such an easy process make a foundational understanding of these kind of frameworks it's going to be super easy all the knowledge is kind of like transferable you will understand that okay what are some really cool features that you are probably missing yes maybe the other ecosystems are going to implement them but as of now spring boot outshines on a lot of aspects why do so many big companies like linkedin netflix and if you see salesforce intuit all of these big tech companies use spring boot a lot of startups that you see in the modern startup ecosystem in india are also relying on spring boot definitely there must be some important factors that spring boot brings into the picture that all of these companies are totally relying on it for building their scalable backend infrastructure now in this particular video we are going to talk about some important pointers that makes spring boot such a hot skill in the market and we will try to understand that why these companies actually love using spring boot in their backend technologies if you want let's say a short answer i would say it's fast secure and scalable but if you want a detailed answer then watch the video till the end i'm going to talk about some very important pointers that are going to be extremely useful for you to understand if you're somebody who is planning to start learning spring boot or who is already working on spring boot and want to get a good perspective on how exactly other companies are leveraging all the particular powers of spring boot so without any further ado let's just start but before starting the video if you have not yet subscribed to the channel do consider subscribing to the channel because we are going to put some really awesome content coming up ahead so let's just start before moving forward i would like to tell you about our brand new offering at algo camp around the advanced spring boot backend development cohort so we were getting a lot of requests to actually launch our next iteration of the spring boot cohort and here we are this one is far more bigger and better than the last one and trust me if you are somebody who is looking to start their journey in the world of spring boot in the backend ecosystem or maybe you already know some things about backend development maybe in spring boot or maybe in some other tech stack this is going to be a one stop solution for you we are going to talk about everything from the absolute beginner level to the advanced level in spring boot we are going to talk about how exactly you can set up your backend ecosystem and backend projects in spring boot we are going to take a microservice driven architecture and build different different project including an uber app including airbnb app payment wallet like paytm wallet app and many more we are going to talk about how exactly microservices can actually communicate with each other in synchronous and asynchronous fashion we are going to see a lot of interesting microservices pattern like cqrs pattern saga pattern for distributed transaction how you can implement saga pattern through orchestration and choreography how saga pattern is going to help you with respect to the implementation if you compare that with two phase commit how you can implement each one of them what is the outbox pattern how exactly event sourcing is going to work how you can integrate kafka for your event sourcing and what not we are going to see so many interesting database concepts like how exactly no sqls are internally implemented using lsm tree what are write ahead logs how you can replicate your databases how you can shard your databases how you can design a good database schema and what not all the topics that we are going to cover must be listed in front of you on the screen here what i can say is that this course is going to be one stop solution to become an advanced backend engineer in spring boot this is definitely going to demand some good time commitment from all the students who are interested but trust me this is going to be one hell of a ride so what are you waiting for do check out the link in the description section below and read the complete end to end syllabus of what we are going to cover in the spring boot cohort you can actually use the coupon spring 2025 to get maximum possible discount on the course and i am really excited to see you guys in the cohort right do check out the link description section below and let's get back to the video so before you complete this video there is an interesting video made by codehead where it's kind of like a parody that that guy has prepared in order to understand that if you compare spring boot with other frameworks like something from express or let's say ruby on rails or django how all of these things actually come into the picture and how spring boot compares with them it's a funny video it will give you a good perspective as well but in this one we are going to talk about some serious discussion altogether but i would highly recommend you guys to definitely watch that video so if you see spring boot out of the box gives you a lot of built in features 
if you see other ecosystems and other frameworks available in other ecosystems for example something like express there is a lot of work that you have to do from the scratch if you see express of course that gives you flexibility and kind of like more granular control on everything that you are building but that also takes a toll on developer velocity or you can say developer productivity if you use spring boot then because of the fact that spring boot brings a lot of built in features already and you have complete control to customize them is something that is actually loved by a lot of companies because think about it like this companies make money by shipping products to their users more users the more i would say the revenue will come up companies are not actually sitting here to just uh, use the most shiny tech and deliver products in a slightly more slower fashion they want to make sure that the products are shipped as fast as possible right because when you are going to release more new features as frequently as possible then you are going to make more revenue and frameworks like spring boot actually tries to work in that particular direction only of course writing code in java can be sometime a bit more lengthy considering the fact that java is very verbose but because of spring boot a lot of these problems are actually handled now let's say if you want any kind of security mechanism to be integrated spring boot has a corresponding package for that if you see if you want to integrate let's say external um, technologies like let's say kafka redis there are dedicated libraries developed in the spring boot ecosystem that you can actually integrate with your project and of course these libraries are not just for spring boot it's for the overall wide wider i would say spring ecosystem but because of these plug and play packages and plug and play libraries spring boot becomes very very powerful most of the time you have to just configure something specific based on your need and that is it and the best part about these libraries is that you can easily plug and play these libraries to any project altogether right you do not have to do a lot of tight coupling you do not have to write code again and again to do the same thing right and because of the fact that a lot of companies are already using spring boot there are so many i would say uh, mature packages and mature libraries available that makes spring boot really really interesting apart from that if you see with respect to scalability and security spring boot is definitely top notch now if you see things like js and the overall js and python ecosystem the biggest point of debate and the biggest point of discussion comes with respect to type safety now because spring boot already uses java type safety is already something that you get inbuilt and that makes the overall life of a developer in terms of debugging and shipping products slightly a bit more easy now you already know that spring boot is now interoperable uh with other languages because of the fact that let's say if you see kotlin as a language kotlin is purely interoperable with java so you can even use kotlin language in spring boot so this gives you even more uh i would say wider perspective on using modern languages and their modern features along with spring boot so it's all about the flexibility that spring boot provides right if you want to update something you can add some configurations on top of it it's um like if you see all the aspects of clean architecture solid principles design patterns everything can be actually added and the code can be written in a way in which it is maintainable highly maintainable i would say extremely flexible and extremely extendable right because of the fact that java follows most of the object oriented programming principles and because java and kotlin are the primary languages in, in which you can write a spring boot code it makes the overall spring boot ecosystem very very powerful right this is the first point that you have to technically keep in mind now one more important pointer that all of these companies do consider while actually building things with spring boot is that their existing ecosystem is already uh, i would say very maturely built in java right now consider this fact that let's say you have a team of 200 developers all of those developers are actually working in java for a long period of time so definitely if new services and new products you have to build it will be relatively more easy to build them in java because you have a fleet of i would say engineers who are very much um, i would say knowledgeable in the ecosystem of java and in the ecosystem of spring boot and because of the fact that java as a language is used in so many different different places it's relatively easier also to hire new people who are actually working with spring boot now interestingly if you have worked with any other framework let's say you have worked with django or you have worked with rails or let's say you have worked with express js or something like from something from lamp stack anywhere it's very easy to get started with spring boot because of the overall ecosystem has been built in a way that you work with convention or configuration kind of like things the overall developer productivity is very high you will be able to switch your tech stack to spring boot very easily for example if you take my example i never formally like started learning of spring boot as my first i would say framework 
I started my backend journey with Ruby and Ruby on Rails and slowly migrated to JS and ExpressJS. But when I started working with LinkedIn and I started working with Google and all the Java related tech stacks, I very easily got onboarded to the Java backend engineering. Because again, Java as a language makes sure that, of course, you're going to write some extra bit of code, but that extra bit of code makes your overall, I would say final code output more understandable and I would say easily extendable as well, right? And my majority learning came from LinkedIn because in LinkedIn, people used to follow all the solid principles, all the design patterns very heavily and they used to focus on it a lot. So again, it comes from the background that because of the fact that companies have their products in Spring Boot, it overall in the, I would say, developer ecosystem of their comp of the particular company, Spring Boot as a framework or Java related libraries and frameworks gets more mature and people start opting it like more easily and again if even if you're hiring a new developer getting them onboarded to Spring Boot is very easy this is again a very very important pointer that works in the favor of Spring Boot now one very important thing about Spring Boot is that Spring Boot has a lot of interesting libraries and packages using which you can enhance your scalability at big scale and you get good microservices based support right if you want to build your architecture based on let's say microservices then spring boot has all the required tools and all the required i would say libraries that can help you to get started with it very very easily this makes the ecosystem of spring boot very much adaptable because of the modern needs of the application that they are having uh, I would say good scale and I would say good humongous traffic on their application, Spring Boot is able to easily cater to all of these needs, right? And because of the fact that you are able to configure a lot of things yourself, you can even, uh, I would say, change something specific based on your altogether needs. Apart from that, libraries like Spring Security and all the authentication and authorization related libraries also make the life of developers easy. A lot of time you see there are some redundant features that everybody has to again and again, again and again implement in other ecosystem. But that's not the case with Spring Boot because of the fact that Spring Boot uh, as a whole community and Spring as a whole community has developed a lot. There are existing libraries and packages that will do a lot of existing work for you. So this makes the ecosystem, I would say, more stable. For example, if you are stuck somewhere, very easily you will be able to find some answers around your question on Stack Overflow. There is such a good community that has been built on Stack Overflow and other developer forums which are going to help you whenever you are stuck. And this is very important because you don't want to always work in a tech stack where you are again and again stuck and there is no help uh, like altogether. You have to yourself figure out everything because this reduces the overall developer uh, velocity. And if your velocity will reduce, the velocity of the feature delivery is going to reduce as well. This again helps Spring Boot a lot. Of course, there are companies who have built their own frameworks and own libraries and internal to that company, there are uh, such, there is like very good support for that. But if I talk about like more and startup small scale companies they cannot invest very heavily on the, building their own framework or building their own language altogether they have to rely on open source solutions and they have to rely on these kind of developer uh, i would say communities and that's where spring boot outshines a lot of other tech stacks and overall i would say the best part about spring boot is that it just work it can make your application fast secure and scalable there are so many tools like Spring Security, Spring Actuator, and so many other tools are already available that are very much required in every step of your development process. Because of the good community support, Spring Boot outshines a lot of things. And if you want to get started with Spring Boot, it is such an easy process. You'll find so many articles and so many YouTube tutorials which are going to help you to get started with Spring Boot. I believe if you are somebody who is coming from other language ecosystem, you just have to spend some time in understanding basics of Java. Because if you know basics of Java, understanding Spring Boot is not going to be, uh, I would say, much of an hassle. If you ask me, I came from the world of Ruby on Rails, where again, Rails as a framework does a lot of things similar to Spring Boot, right? And because of the fact that I already knew Rails, getting onboarded to Spring Boot was such a breeze, right? So if you are learning Spring Boot and you have to migrate to, let's say, Rails or Django or Laravel, or let's say you are coming from these ecosystem, you have to migrate to Spring Boot, it's gonna be very, very easy, right? It's not a rocket science. If you want to at least get started with things and at least base, like uh, make a foundational understanding of these kind of frameworks, it's going to be super easy all the knowledge is kind of like transferable so i would highly recommend you guys to try to explore spring boot once on your own if you're somebody who is like a crazy fan of monstack i love monstack but trust me give a shot to spring boot you will understand that okay what are some really cool features that you are probably missing yes maybe the other ecosystems are going to implement them but as of now spring boot outshines on a lot of aspect 
that being said let's wrap this particular video here and we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos where we are going to continue our discussion on a lot of topics around tech and career till then take care bye bye i'm sanket singh signing off